Good day, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm actually so glad to be here as a part of week four of this speech craft program. And uh, it's so uh, heartening to see so many participants and attendees in today's session. In fact, today's session, there are two speakers. One would be the session on facing an interview with confidence by Dr. Somas Sobrade, as well as vocal variety, uh, sorry, a special session on Udli given by Toastmaster Ronald Krimer. I'm so happy again to see so many of you here and being week four, I believe that you would have already got the crux of what being a Toastmaster is and more importantly, knowing what public speaking is all about. In this session, in the last four weeks, you would not have known about the leadership part of it, but you definitely would have got a good idea of what public speaking is all about. Without any delay, I can see Dr. Som is smiling. <laughs> That's him. I know him from Malaysia. Dr. Som is from Malacca, Malaysia. He's a gynecologist by profession and a professor at Malacca Manipal Medical College. Dr. Som is actually originally from India, but he is with us in Malaysia for the last X number of years. I'm not even sure how, how long that is, but <laughs> okay. And he's gonna introduce himself later. I'm so happy to have him here with us. He's a great speaker. May I have the privilege of introducing distinguished Toastmaster, Dr. Somasundra Bitte. Let's give him a round of applause. Woo! Thank you very much, Dr. Mary. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for inviting for this session, as well as I have to thank uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Pramod for sending me all the agendas and the emails to make sure that I come for this and not sleep off. It's 10 o'clock in the night here. <laughs> right. Moving on to the session. First and foremost, can you do this for me? If you have... Sorry, to interrupt, doctor. But yeah. uh, how do you want to show up as, to see that the time occurs? All right. Uh, I have 20 minutes, right? So we can do 15, 17, 20. Sure. Thank you. Or at least not. Right. Now that's out of the way. So next is, I want you to write on the chat box for those who feel that they have failed at least once in something in life. And zero for people who have never failed in life. Just one and zero. One means I have failed sometimes. Uh, zero. I'm waiting for any zeros. Okay. <laughs> right. I think you can stop typing now. That's awesome. So if you have written zero, I would have said like, you know, maybe you don't want to feel vulnerable or you're lying. Or you haven't seen life enough. Because we all fail in something, somewhere, sometimes. And that is the root cause which shakes the confidence when we go for interview because we are thinking a bit ahead. We become time traveler. We think, what if I fail in that interview? And that's enough to shake the confidence. So moral of the story, don't feel afraid of failure. You can face the interview with confidence. 20 minutes over. But then if I say that, I'm going to fail in my job of adding value to 20 minutes because many of you were like pretty surprised. How come we were dragged out of the breakout room? We were doing such a great thing. So I need to make sure that I add value to you. So these 20 minutes, I'm going to talk to you how to make sure that you don't feel afraid of failure. And when you go ahead for an interview, how do you deal with it? Being in the university, many times... I interview students or prospective students who come for MBBS. We have an initial selection process. After that, the final selection would be via interview. And till now, I have interviewed many, many people, students who were prospective students. And I have some points that I take from there, which I'm going to share with you. Plus, because of you, I have also checked out 
with some of the human resource managers in various parts of the world, what do they think that they want in their prospective employee? So let's let me share my slides and we'll plunge right in. That's me. I've been a Toastmaster for eight years and I have done something with the John Maxwell certification and HRDC accredited trainer. Of course, this only applies for Malaysia. That's me. And I know my name is a big mouthful name, a typical Bengali mouthful name. You can just address me, Dr. Som, that's good enough. I won't feel offended. So today's outline or overview, these are the three things I want you to focus on. One, the platform for interview. When you go for interview, now things have changed. Pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Now interview platforms have become online, physical. We are going to work on that. Then interviewee's perspective, who's going for the interview, interviewer's perspective, that means one who's taking the interview. Because I'm talking about facing in an interview with confidence, so I would presume most of you who are on the other side, you will be on the interviewee. So that's how I'm going to try to add value to this session. Let's talk about platform. As I told you, there are two platforms, online and physical. Now, when we talk about online and physical, there are a few things that you have to keep in mind. You need to know which platform you're giving the interview because that makes a lot of difference. If you're not aware of online platform, then you need to make sure you learn about online platform. Online platform can be various platforms. Before pandemic, I only knew Zoom. But then I figured out, hey, all weird, weird names. I even, I didn't even know that Blue Jeans could be a conferencing platform, which I learned in, I always thought it's like, why are they saying come to Blue Jeans? I thought it's a shop. So you need to be aware of what platform you're dealing with because every platform has its uniqueness. Now, when you come to online, you have a little bit of perks. That means you don't have to be fully formal. You can be half formal. That is the bottom half, uh, bottom half, no, sorry, the top half, not the bottom half. The top half, you can wear coat, tie, whatever. Just don't stand up and it'll be fine. I'll tell you one story what happened. This was in District 102, where I belong. I was uh, the contest toastmaster for a district contest. And when you're contest toastmaster for a district contest, for those who are getting used to toastmaster, it is like, uh, if I put it crudely, MC for a contest. I was the contest toastmaster introducing, ta -ta -ta -ta, everything done. After that, huh, lunchtime. But there's no lunch in the house. Call Grab or Uber, as in India, as you use. The grab fellow got the food. I went to get it. And he was looking at me and laughing his heart out. I was like, that's weird. Then I came back. And then I realized, uh-oh, I know why he's laughing. Because he can see me wearing tie coat, but I was wearing shorts. Now that is the Zoom attire. You can do that if you want to. But as long as you don't have Zoom accidents. When it comes to physical... Now, this is also a bit tricky because you know you have to groom yourself when you go for the interview. You just can't walk in anyhow. For this, you might need to know a little bit about companies' policies on dress code. If they're sales or if they're into, let's say, surfboard on a seaside, you can't go in a suit and or tux and go there. You'll be like looked as, what is he doing here? This is the wrong place, wrong attire. Similarly, you cannot go to a consultancy firm which deals with high-end clientels with uh, Bermudas or shorts and uh, like a golf t-shirt and say, hey, dude, what's up? No, nope. grooming, very important. You must know the platform. You must know the company's policy with dress code. That's the first thing that you need to know. Prepare yourself in form of grooming and dress code. Next would be the interviewees perspective. When we talk about interviewees, that means what you're supposed to do before you go in. 
once again, I said, you know, the company's policy about the dress code, but not just the dress code. You need to know the company's policies about how they work. What is the company all about? What are their values? Obviously, if you're well prepared, you can answer. Like most of the time when I interview students, I often ask them, have you heard of uh, this Manipal and where it's located? And if a student tells me, yeah, yeah, I actually did a search. It's in Malacca. It's near the coast. It's uh, 100 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur and it is a heritage city. It automatically creates an impression. Hmm, not bad. This person knows how to prepare stuff. So this person would be a good match or a fit for my company or as a medical student. Second would be body language. This is extremely important, whether it's online or offline. Online even so, because if you notice that I've been always looking at you, but I've not been looking at you. I've been looking at the camera there, but it gives you a feeling I'm looking at you. That is something you need to learn when you're using an online platform. Whereas when it comes to a physical interview, face to face, sometimes your body gestures can create an impression. The way you sit down and where you slouch or like, or you appear nervous, fidgeting with your hands and things like that. This body language gives a lot of impact. Okay, this person that I'm dealing with is fidgety, is nervous. Maybe he might crumple under pressure. It just gives a negative vibe to your interviewer and they might judge you unnecessarily. The third one is the facial gestures. Keep your emotions under control. It's a bit difficult, but especially for those who are very expressive type, they can say like, you know, when would you like to join? join? Yeah, yeah. Just keep a smile. Don't, don't have to overtly show your emotions. Or if you cannot answer, uh, these, these kind of things shows that you have self-doubt. You're not secure. You're insecure. So make sure your facial gestures, keep a smile, even though you might be having that different types of feelings. At this point, I would say, uh, how many of you have seen um, that movie called Inside Out? Can I see a show of hands? Inside Out. Okay, not many people. Okay, okay, at least one or two people have seen. Inside out means the emotions that goes within us. But outside, it's a totally different thing. There's a lot of emotions, sadness, joy, uh, uh, sorrow, anger, fear, disgust. But outside, you maintain a calm face. That's what you need to do. Keep a smile. Keep a smile. Don't, like according to the Gen Z terms, LOL, ROFL, all those things, you don't do that. Just make, make sure, keep a smile, um, make sure you exude confidence. Now, the last part, what I wanted to tell you is, this is something I was wondering. I was thinking like, if I'm going to talk only about my university, then what if people are there who are not applying jobs in university? What about other places? So what I decided, I tried to activate my network and ask my friends who are in situated in three different countries, namely Malaysia, India, and Dubai. And they are in HR heads. They are H, they're all three are, of them that I asked are HR heads. And I asked them, like, can you tell me three things that you want in your potential employee? Three things, just three things. Don't give me explanation, just three things. So... The first person that is HR from Malaysia, he said, I, I would look into knowledge, skills, and attitude of the prospective employee. Then I moved on to India. India said, I would look into attitude, the perseverance, and patience. I was like, wow, not matching, but okay. And then the HR from Dubai, she said, I would look into the willingness to learn attitude and work ethics. Do you see something common that all the three HR told me? Anybody? I think it's staring at us. And that is... I'm waiting for any... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got it. 
the attitude. Somehow all the HR heads looked into this. So they are looking for the right attitude. And when I talked to them, they said, well, the competency may be borderline, but if they have a right attitude, we don't mind hiring them. So when you go for an interview, have a positive attitude. The attitude that was mentioned, willingness to learn, willingness to adapt to situation, patience to adapt to that situation. You have to have that attitude. Do not get impatient. And for that, you need to have this thing called growth mindset. Many times they say that the first sign of failure, we tend to give up. If I have to say that's fixed mindset. Oh, this thing happened. Yeah, it's destined. I don't think I'm capable of doing this. Yeah, I know. That person always does better than me. I, I don't think so. I'm like capable enough. All these thoughts, this mindset is fixed mindset. You should say, okay, I didn't do it well. I, I failed. I was told by one of my friends who's based in US in the Silicon Valley area. He said, during that interview, they will ask, sometimes they'll ask one question. How many times have you failed in your life? And if the candidate says, ah, no, I have not failed, that interview is already over. Because unless you fail, you won't know how to improvise, how to go, how to grow, how to come back, come back with increased vigor. And finally, coping mechanism. The coping mechanism is so important. At this point, I'll tell you one story also that happened with me taking an interview. Most of the times, I would say during the interview that when we select our uni students, 90% of them clears. There's no issues. We just checked on, check on all these levels that I told you. One particular student, when I, when I asked, like, you know, MBBS is very stressful. It's five years of studying and meeting patients, meeting expectations. So obviously, things can get stressful at times. And he said, yes, sir, I do agree. It can get stressful. I said, so how do you manage your stress? That was the question I put to him. And he said, yeah, that's something I never thought of. And you know, I, I really, like when I get stressed, I don't know what to do. Now, this fact, they might have told very naively because this interview, when I interviewed, they are all in their 19s or 20s. He was probably very naive. But this was a red flag sign. So when you say, I don't know how to cope or I don't know how to handle this, immediately the employer would say, oh, oh, this person might crumple, this might person might become a liability. So you must have a coping mechanism. But that doesn't mean that you're going to oversell yourself and say, come what may, I'm going to handle, I'm Superman. No, there are times when you cannot cope, you need help, you need the team. But coping mechanism, how do you cope? Okay, when I, when I get really stressed, I go play tennis. I go for a swim. I go for a drive. All the employers or the interviewers want to know is your coping mechanism. Everyone gets stressed. So once you have your coping mechanism in place, excellent. So finally, I would say these are the things that I would consider that would help you take care of the fear that you have and once you have the fear, once you take care of the fear, the confidence will set in. So know the platform. Prepare yourself adequately. That means not only just groom, know about the company's policy. So you are not going there blindly. You're not like, okay, ask me whatever, I'll try to answer. No, you are prepared. You probably would be anticipating the and questions. Know about the company, have a positive approach. Have a solution-based approach. Like, okay, there will be problems. I can talk about 100 problems, but that's not what the company wants. The company is more impressed if you can actually give them a solution or perhaps suggest solutions. Express a growth mindset to your potential employers. Said, yes, problems will be there. Things can be difficult. I can fail, but I'll come back. I'll get back. I'll work on it even harder. I'll make sure that I take care I learned a very um, interesting example. I, I have to stop this to tell you. And that is something even sitting here in Malaysia, I feel the pride 
is the Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 2, they said the lander did not land. It failed. Many people say that it's failed. But what people don't know that, hey, what about the orbiter? That's still going on. It's 95% success. So now now what, what did Chandrayaan, the ISRO team do? This is such a lovely example of growth mindset. They said, okay, our Chandrayaan 2, we use success-based approach. Now we are going to use failure-based approach. That means we are going to figure out all the possibilities that can lead to failure. And based on the, the report that I've read, they have tried 40 different ways how the lander will not land before sending the Chandrayaan 3 out on this um, space, the moon. So that is what I'm saying. You must have that growth mindset. Otherwise, there's no progress. After that, everything would have halted. And India is now waiting with anticipation. Okay, 23rd August, 545, let's see. Without growth mindset, that won't work. So that's, that's all from my side at the moment. And yeah, it's time for questions. And you can always connect with me via LinkedIn if you have any to connect with me or I'm... I'm happy to come for any courses or talk to you. All right. Open to questions. If there's any, you can type it or you can unmute and talk to me. Okay. Uh, okay. Sarika. Uh, hello. Hello. Sorry. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Please tell me. Uh, I just have one question for you. Willingness to learn. How do you assess that attribute when you're interviewing a candidate for like five to 10 minutes? Very difficult. I would actually connect that HR head to you. But having said that, probably they would give them scenarios. Mm -hmm. Give them scenarios and try to see that how they, ultimately they would like to see on the growth mindset that means, are you willing to change? Or like they say, okay, this is not going to happen. So, okay, I'll give you an example. This one happened in our university. There were many people, many faculty, when the pandemic came and hit us, it was very difficult for many faculties uh, to adapt to the online teaching. Mm -hmm. They said, no, 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 I don't like, this is horrible, this is horrible. Nah. I mean, uh, then some people had to use MS Teams. And I personally use Zoom because I was very comfortable and I felt it's very student-friendly. Some people literally did not want to teach. They said, no, I mean, we, we will wait because all of us believe this is just a flu. It will go away in one month. Remember that time? It will go away till two weeks. Give two weeks flu. But ultimately, things went ahead. So this, this is the willingness to learn. Now the question is, they would probably, in my opinion, give scenarios and like find out. I'm sure like the when they do the MBA in HR, I'm sure they'll have various scenarios which <laughs> with which they can test. Uh, well, my side, uh, I would probably check like, you know, if you, I would probably say, if you fail, what would you do? Or if you fail in one subject uh, twice, twice in a row, and three times means you're out, what would you do? Then they would say like, no, I would, I want to see how they cope how they brainstorm, how they find out the solution to their problems. Maybe that would give an idea of willingness to learn. But if there's any mm -hmm. HR who wants to add on, who's in the HR field may want to add on here. Right? Thank you so much. We have Brunda here, who is from HR. Brunda, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I was just about to type the question. I will actually type it in the chat. So here's an example of a question. Like, can you tell me about a recent situation where you were, where you had to learn something new at work and how did you approach it? So this is just one example. There could be several. You could ask about a failure or ask about a thing wherein you were not able to get a particular process at work. And how did you tackle that situation? So several of these could be could work well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Rajiv Srinivas. Yeah, please. 
Yeah, thank you so much for the session, first of all. And my question is, how to evolve the growth mindset? Because we face challenges on a daily basis. And at times, yeah, we have this coping mechanism in our mind, but still, like, yeah, we can't figure out what. So what will be your suggestion on building a habit to make sure we have a growth mindset? This one, actually, I would say that uh, sometimes we have to avoid negativity. Like every place, job you go, every workplace, there will be negativity. So how do you do that? You have to focus on the constructive aspect. Like as far as I'm concerned, uh, there are so many things that so many things goes on. Uh, and if you indulge in yourself in those, you will be lost. So plan out, plan out events, plan out projects, plan out webinars, plan out something that, that is constructive. Once you are into a constructive thing, like, okay, I want to organize. And being in Toastmaster, there is no dearth of events that you can organize. So that would slowly bring in more people with similar mindset or who has more positive mindset towards you. And if that happens, definitely the people that you surround yourself with have an influence if you find the environment is very negative try to avoid that environment you may not be able to change the environment so you have to move away or avoid negativity avoid plenty of gossips i know it's very juicy sometimes but because whoever talks to you about someone will talk about you to other <laughs> so i guess that's one of the ways i'm sure there'll be many other ways thank you uh, um, Yes. I want to know the angle from to answer a particular interview question. That is about a ethical dilemma. Sometimes we were asked to basically answer in in our professional life when you face an ethical dilemma and how do you deal with so obviously I am able to read some articles on ethical dilemma, but I was not able to basically frame out uh, but uh, the way I can answer the effectively, so I would like to understand how should I basically frame the execution and answer them. Okay, uh, let me, uh, because the voice was a bit cracking, so uh, let me just uh, repeat the question for you. So in an interview, okay. if there's a question with regards to ethical dilemma, how do you handle that, right? Okay, for that, you need to have your own set of values. You must have your own set of values. Like, for example, if I if I say one of my values that I've always follow, come whatever, is empowerment. I would like to make sure that whenever I come to any organization or team, I would like to empower and enrich. At the end of the day, I have to give back something to that place and make sure that when I leave the place, there is no vacuum there. Now, these are my values. So if I have to do something or say something against my values, I'll never be happy in that place. So there is no question of dilemma. So if I know that if I have to twist and turn to get this job, I might get this job for a while, but long run, I'll be frustrated because that's not me who's there. It's someone else. I'm I'm trying to be someone else. Eventually, you will you will be frustrated. So be genuine and listen to yourself, to your values. If you if you want to get the job against your values, that's up to you. But if you follow your values, I'm sure you'll get the right place and then you will work with passion. And if you work with passion, you won't feel it's work. You'll find it's fun every day. Like teaching is something that I love. And so when I go to teach students, it's always a fun session. I don't feel tired. Sometimes I feel tired traveling 30 kilometers to another campus, but I don't feel tired teaching. So that's something you have to look into yourself, introspect, what are my values? Is this question clashing with my values? Yes. Then the dilemma is sorted. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Your time. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one question. Go uh, ahead. Uh, while uh, attending the interview, uh, is it must to uh, give uh, every answer for interview for every question? Okay, that's that's very interesting. No, you don't have to. But, but that doesn't mean that you'll be silent. If they ask you a question and if you don't know, you can always say, I'm, I have to look into it and check it out. Or I'll get back to you. Or this, I'm not sure at the moment. I have, uh, I have to look into it. 
because we are not chat gpt we don't have answers to everything we have to there are certain things that we will not know and uh, if we don't know that's okay that also will probably answer sarika's question about willingness to learn that yeah i'm not sure about that i'll look into it and i'll get back to you if you give me an opportunity so you you can you but try not to bluff okay. try not to bluff and give a fake answer which you think is correct which you heard somewhere be genuine i think the that's what i said right when they the interviewer was looking in they're looking for the right attitude the competency is not the main thing yes competency is important but if the competency is slightly lower you can still be made competent but if you have the wrong attitude that cannot be changed that's very very difficult to change the attitude of a person okay thank, thank you, you. all right the red card is flashing so our session has come to an end Thank you very much, Dr. Som. Thank you for Thank enlightening. You so, Dr. Som, for, for your wonderful session. And this is your virtual token of appreciation for this wonderful session. Thank you. I'll share it on the email again. Yeah. yeah. It's time now to go into the breakout rooms.